Hey, welcome back to the channel. So there are a lot of Mac users out there that prefer Android phones, but one thing that you miss out on when you're using an Android with Mac is some of those features that are inherent when you're using an iPhone with a Mac, like shared clipboard, messages on both devices, being able to easily send files back and forth. Well, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to get a lot of those features between your Android phone and your Mac using free software. So let's get right into this tutorial. All right, so here we are on our Mac desktop. Now there's just two pieces of software that we need to install on here, and then a couple of things we need to do on our Android phone. So let's get right into this. I have these already up. I'll put a link down in the description to both of these sites, but we're gonna download KDE Connect and Google Messages for desktop. Now KDE Connect is gonna allow us to do things like uh, share the clipboard, send files back and forth, all that kind of good stuff and the Google Messages for desktop is gonna allow us to have our messages from our phone on our desktop. So I'm actually gonna start off with the Google Messages for desktop, cause that's actually easier. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and install this, download it for Mac. Just a pretty quick install. Now once that's installed, we're gonna go to our downloads folder, just go into this folder that's created, and we're just gonna drag this into our applications folder. Now we wanna launch that, but in order to do this, we have to tell it that it's safe. So we're gonna to have to go out to our applications folder, go to our Google messages here, and then right click on it and open it. If not, you're gonna get a, a message that it's not safe and it won't let you open it. So we're gonna open this. And trust me, this is absolutely safe. Okay, now that the application is open, we can go ahead and scan it. Now I should mention that you have to be using Google messages for this if you're using the Samsung Messages app or any other Messages app, you're not gonna be able to do this. This only works with the uh, Messages by Google app. So what we're gonna do is scan this code. So I'm just gonna share my phone screen here for a second, and I'll just kind of bring it off to the side a little bit because I wanna show you the background here in a second. So all we're gonna do now is we are gonna scan that QR code that's in the application. So we're gonna go into Messages, and then in the top left hamburger menu, we're gonna pull that down and go to device pairing. Now, once we're in this window, we just hit that uh, button in the center, the QR code scanner, and then brings up the camera and we just wanna scan that code that's on the screen. And now um, it's asking us over here if we wanna remember the computer, let's go ahead and hit yes. But you can see, of course I have the names blocked out here, but the messages that are on the phone are the same that are on the desktop. So we have access to all our messages. We can send and receive. When we receive something, it'll pop up a notification and we can also send and receive pictures, all that kind of good stuff. All right, so now we got that out of the way, that's all good to go. We can go ahead and let me just uh, hide my phone screen again. And we're gonna shut this down and we're gonna move on to the next part, which is doing the KDE Connect. All right, so now we got messages installed. The next thing we're gonna do is install KDE Connect. Now this is similar. We have the KDE Connect server that we need to install on our computer and then the client that we're gonna install on our phone. So let's do the server first. Now I wanted to show you something. I'll have a link down in the description to the release of KDE Connect. Because if you come to the KDE Connect site and go to download and then go to Mac OS here, now there's various operating systems you can install this on, but if we go to Mac OS, it's gonna bring us to a site that has beta versions. And oftentimes there's problems with these beta versions. So we wanna skip this one and instead we're gonna use uh, this link that takes us to the release. Now, if you notice here, this says nightly, and we're gonna actually use the link in the description to go to the release. Now, these are more stable. Uh, something gets to the release channel once it's you know considered uh, stable. Those nightly builds are something that change every night, so oftentimes bug, bugs are introduced. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this stable one. All right, now that that's downloaded, we're just gonna go and open that DMG. 
Now, that's another thing I wanted to point out. There's three files here. You don't need to worry about these two, and you don't really need to worry about this number. This is just the date. You don't have to really worry about that as long as you are seeing um, the KDE Connect release for macOS, just get this DMG and you'll be good to go. Okay, that's downloaded. We'll open the DMG and then we're gonna drag this KDE Connect indicator into the applications folder. Now we wanna do the same thing like we did with the messages. We wanna go into applications and we're gonna right click on this and open it. Now, sometimes we have to do this twice just to tell it that it's safe. Yeah, first time. And then we just do it again. Just, uh, they're just making sure that you know what you're doing here. And this is completely safe. So do not worry about this. This is open source and it's code that's viewed by thousands of people. So now you can see up at the top, let's get rid of this window here. We'll close down applications. And you can see up at the top of the screen here, we have this KDE Connect. We can click on that and go to configure. And this is where we can connect our phone. So the next thing we're gonna do is bring up the phone window and get that going. So let me open that up. Now for this, we're just gonna go into the Play Store and we're gonna search for KDE Connect. You can see I have it up there already. And it's the only one in here. Just make sure it has the KDE logo and it's by the KDE community and go ahead and install that. Okay, that's installed and we can go ahead and open that up. We wanna allow KDE to send us notifications. And then if I move this out of the way so we can see both these windows, you can see that in our KDE Connect on the Mac, we have the phone showing up now and on the phone, we have the MacBook Pro local. So let's just get this going on the phone. We're gonna tap on that MacBook Pro logo, local. We're gonna request pairing. Then after uh, requesting the pairing, click on the phone name and hit accept. So now we have these two devices uh, paired up and connected to each other. On the Mac, we can see this list of different options that we have for sharing with the phone, battery monitor, clipboard, connectivity monitor, all that kind of stuff. And then on the uh, MacBook Pro, and then on the phone side, we can see we have similar stuff, but we have some other plugins or some other permissions that we need to uh, give the application in order to do these functions. Now you can look through here and give it per whatever permissions you want. If you don't give it permissions, you won't be able to use that function, but you don't have to give all these permissions if you don't want. And that's one thing that's nice. It's, it's not forcing you to give the permissions. You just won't be able to use that feature if you don't give the permissions. So I'm just gonna go through and give all these permissions. And then once uh, I'm done with that, I'll come back. Okay, I wanted to come back here for a second because on the last permission where it asks if you want to be able to send and receive files, uh, it lets you choose what directory you want to send and receive from so it doesn't have access to your whole folder structure. So what I did was I just went into here, I uh, clicked on plus to make a new folder. I navigated to my documents folder and then just created this KDE Connect uh, folder in there. And then I'm gonna select use this folder it's gonna ask if you want KDE to have access to that folder and you hit yes. So now all the permissions are done and our Mac and our uh, phone are connected. So I'm just gonna get this window out of the way. Uh, so if we come up to the KDE icon at the top, now this, I, this will start up when you start your computer next time. So you won't have to go through this every time. This is just the initial setup. It'll start up and then when your phone comes on the network, the two of them will automatically connect to each other. So if we drop this down, we can see that we have our phone in here now and we can see things like the battery status, uh, we can see the signal strength and we can ring our device if we can't find our phone and we know it's somewhere on the network, we can click that and it'll, uh, it'll ring it. We can get a photo from the phone, we can send files and this is where we set up that directory on the phone. And we also have SMS messages. Now this is a little clunky, which is why I showed you how to do 
you know, the Google messages down here. But if you don't want to use the Google messages app and you are using like a Samsung or some other SMS tool, you can use this functionality to send and receive SMS. This is SMS only. It's not MMS. So um, you won't be able to do pictures and stuff like that, but you can still uh, get and send your messages. Okay, so we got this set up. So now what, what can we do with this? Well, one thing we can do is, let me bring this up again. We can grab a picture from our phone. So if we click on the KDE Connect, come to our phone and click get a photo. It opens up the camera app and then I'll just take a picture of my keyboard. And it's gonna ask us down at the bottom there if it's okay or we wanna retry. Let's say it's okay. So now if we uh, look down in our downloads folder, we can see that picture that we just took with our phone. Let me drag it over here so you can see it. So this is the same picture we just took with our phone. It automatically put it in the downloads folder and now we can use that anywhere we want. All right, so another thing that I use frequently on my Mac is part of continuity and that's the shared clipboard. So you can share a clipboard between your iOS device or your Mac or multiple Macs and we can do something similar here with KDE Connect. If we just have a note app open and I'm gonna type in, this is a test. And then I'm gonna select that and right click and copy. And then I come over on the phone. You can see that it says the clipboard is copied. I can paste that in and uh, it comes over just to show you that's legit. We can do, you know, I'm just gonna type some gibberish there, copy it click copied to clipboard again, we can long press, paste it in, and there you go. Now we can go the other way. It's a, it's not quite as seamless, but um, we can say, you know, back to Mac. And then if we select this whole thing, copy this, we have to come up into our notifications, hit the down arrow next to KDE connect and send clipboard. Now that sends it back to the Mac and we can come here and we can paste that in and it comes back. So we can share both ways. We have to manually send it when we're going from the Android device back to the Mac, but coming from the Mac to the Android device, we don't have to do anything except paste it in. All right, next thing I wanted to talk about is AirDrop-like functionality. Now, this isn't quite as seamless as AirDrop, but it does allow you to share files between your devices and also uh, let you send a URL over to your phone. So let's do that first. If you just come up to the KDE icon and then come down to send a file or URL, you have this toggle box, whether you want to send a URL, send a file, you can select your device if you have multiple multiple devices that you're paired to. So let's just send a URL to uh, everybody's favorite YouTube channel. And we can see when we send it on the phone, we get a little pop up uh, that it came over. And if we tap on that, it just brings us right to that URL. So super easy to send something over. Of course, you can copy it out of your browser and paste it in there too. You don't have to type it. So next thing I want to do here is send a file. And I just downloaded this uh, Creative Commons photo of a forest here. And we're going to send that over to our phone. So again, if we come up here, select our device, and then select send a file or URL, we can send a file. And then all we need to do is just browse out to that file and open it. And then we can send it off to the device. And then now if we open the gallery on the phone, we can see that uh, picture is there and we can open it up and it saves it to that folder that we created in the configuration step. Now this also works the other way. So if we wanna send something from our phone, I'm just gonna open my gallery and maybe this picture of the egg, I'm gonna long press on it, go to share. And then you can see one of the items in the share is KDE Connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. We can select the device that we're paired to. If we're paired to multiple devices, we'll see them in here. I'm just gonna select the MacBook Pro local. And then you can see that it saved it to our downloads folder. And there's that picture of the eggs. So very easy to send files back and forth. It's like I said, it's not quite as seamless. You don't have the graphical interface for AirDrop and all that stuff, but very easy to do and allows you to send those files back and forth between devices. 
All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is using your phone camera with your Mac. Now on Ventura, you can do this with something called continuity camera, where you can use your iPhone camera as a camera on your Mac. Well, you can do that here uh, with your Android camera using a piece of software called Camo, and you don't need an M1 Mac, you can do this with whatever Mac you have. Uh, just go to the site, I'll have a link down in the description and click the download for Mac OS, super quick download. We're gonna go ahead and click on it and then uh, click on that downloaded file. It's asking us if we're sure that it's not malicious. Go ahead and open that. Now on my install here, you can see I only have one option. You're probably gonna have like three or four options on yours. That's only because I've installed this on my system before. So some of the system files that it lays down are already in place. So like I said, you're gonna see a few more options. Don't worry about it. It's just moving things into the places on your system that it needs to be for it to function. So go ahead and hit start install. Put in your password. And then when it's done, it should launch the studio. Now, again, we're not seeing it here because I've installed this before, but when you first install it, it's gonna say that it needs some system access. Um, it's gonna have a button for you to open to the correct place in settings. But all you need to do is come into this privacy and security set section of settings. And then if you scroll down a little bit on the first install right around here, it's going to say that camo uh, re requested access, which was denied. And then it'll have an allow button and you can just click that allow button and give it the access it needs. It's completely safe. Don't worry about it. Um, we just need to install that piece. So now this is installed on our Mac. We just have to install the client on our Android device. All right. So now we got the client installed on our computer. So now we can come back to our phone. Go to the Play Store and we're going to search for Camo. And then we're just going to install the client. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and hit open. Hit continue. It's going to ask for permissions for the camera and the microphone, which makes sense because that's what we're sending. You can just hit the while using the app. You don't have to have it open all the time. This screen is just saying if you haven't installed it on the computer yet, this is giving you instructions to send the link. And now we're in the application. So when we want to pair a device on the computer, we just click this connect a device button, brings up a QR code. And then on the phone, we can hit that third button on the right hand side in the top right. Looks like a little Wi Fi symbol. Click on that. It's going to let you scan that QR code. We're going to scan that. And now you can see that we are using the phone on the camera. Sorry about the messy desk. And you can see it picks up that up as the camera. So you can use that as your FaceTime camera. You can use it in OBS, all kinds of things. It works really well. It's uh, pretty solid and I haven't had a problem with it. Like I said, you do need this third party program to make this work, but it's free, it's safe and uh, it works great. So there is another option for uh, kind of a sidecar kind of functionality where you can use your Android phone or Android tablet as another screen for your Mac. So there you go. It's a relatively easy setup and gives you some options to replace some of those features that you're missing out on by not using an iOS device with Mac OS. If you have any questions or comments on anything I talked about in this video, leave those down in the comment section. If you want to see that video that I mentioned about using an Android tablet as a second screen for your Mac, let me know that too. If you found this useful and informative, hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it, please make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.